Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your February 20th to the 28th, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Capricorn, February 20th to the 28th, 2022, Capricorn. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. 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 So at the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The top is our heart or emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. At a root, we have the Empress, which I love. There's, we're pregnant with possibilities during this time. For some of us, we might actually find that this is a very fertile time if we want to get pregnant. So do be mindful of that. But there is also a sense here of this is, you know, this is a fertile ground for opportunities, for creativity, for insight, for ideas. If there's something that we've wanted to do, you know, if there's, you know, something that we've wanted to start creating, like a painting or a picture or, you know, writing or even, you know, scientific ideas. This is the time where we're going to find ourselves being really innovative, being really creative, kind of thinking outside of the box. And it's bubbling up within us. So that's really quite cool. And then we have the moon, the high priestess, very strong sacred feminine energy at our root. So we're, we're really connecting with the sacred feminine aspects of ourselves. The veil is being lifted. We're seeing things with so much more clarity than we have before. It can be, it can be overwhelming during this time. And we're also seeing people with more clarity. So people who we could have thought, oh, they're like this or, oh, they're like that. It's like, okay. But now I'm starting to see a different layer of them. I'm starting to see them in a different light. It moves us to our subconscious inner self and it's the nine of wands we have to be very careful everybody's going to kind of be telling us what to do how to do things we're going to be trying to listen to many different people many different and kind of polarizing ideas so just be aware of that it brings us then to the two of cups this is the minor arcana lovers card this is healing this is unity this is connection this is brilliance really coming forward 
It brings us then to our emotional self and we have the King of Cups. This is water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. There's a real sense of I'm embracing my heart. I'm embracing what I love. I also have to be very mindful here because the King of Cups knows that I can't listen to what everybody is telling me. We, we just can't. Capricorn, we can't listen to what everybody else is demanding on them, what on us, what everybody else is pushing us forward towards or backwards towards or, you know, in the middle. It's like I need to listen to me, to what I'm discovering for myself, for what I want. And it brings us then to temperance, which is balance. This is Sagittarius energy. So if we're born on the cusp with Sagittarius, this comes through quite powerfully. Or if we have Sagittarius within our natal chart, we're going to find that there's a need for balance here. There's a need for harmony. There's also a need for going deeper, asking more questions, figuring out more. It brings us then to the star, which is Aquarius energy. So if we're born on the cusp with Aquarius, this comes out quite powerfully. Or if we have Aquarius within our natal chart, this is a sense of what I wish for, what I'm discovering, what I'm developing within my life coming forward. But this isn't just the, I cross my fingers and I wish for, you know, a pony type of thing. This is a, what my soul deeply wishes for, what I long for, you know, late at night when I think the whole world isn't listening or when everything is quiet and I can just kind of talk to spirit or connect with myself. This is what I long for. And it brings us to the chariot. It brings us to to cancer energy. Now, cancer energy is our sister sign. So cancer energy has an interesting impact on us, meaning that it can be our best friend in the whole entire world, right? Like a sister can be just absolutely wonderful, or it can be very chaotic energy, energy that knows how to push our buttons just really, really well. So what we're going to have to be mindful of during this time, as we're looking at what we're wishing for, we have to be mindful of sabotage. We have to be mindful of people kind of roiling us up or boiling us up, you know, emotionally. And we also have to be mindful of the way that we're moving forward. You know, are we in harmony with ourselves or is it subconsciously we want to be moving in one direction and consciously we are forcing ourselves to move another direction? And is that causing conflict within us? What is what is the conflict that is coming forward during this time? Because I just see us pulled into very distinct and very powerful directions. And that's going to be something that we we need to come to a realization of during this time. So let us see our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. And this is the Prince of Pentacles. Now this is us. It can be that we act a little bit immature during this time, not to insult us at all, but it's just going to be something to be mindful of. We also have to be mindful of lies around money. We might not be telling ourselves the truth about money while we're in things, we also might not be, you know, getting the truth from people during this time when it comes to money. This can also be somebody who is, you know, who speaks our language because, you know, they are earth sign energy. So they know what we want to hear, what we need to hear as an earth sign to, to move forward towards something, to be, you know, kind of enticed by something. And here it is somebody without the follow through, without the backing that they think that they have, you know? So just be very aware of that. It could be somebody with a really great idea you know, finances to follow it through, or it can be somebody who, you know, just gets lazy. Like they can, they can do it. We know they can do it, but they drop the ball, you know, halfway through or not even halfway through. I'm just going to take a sip of water. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. This is divine wisdom. This is the, the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. We know more than we think we do during this time. Divinely, we are being guided. Divinely, there is wisdom coming forward for us. So at the root here, it's all about what we are birthing forward, what we are creating, what we are developing. And again, that could be a blanket, a quilt, that could be, you know, making a sweater, that could be, you know, that could be a child, that could be going back to school or classes or, you know, taking a webinar, looking at something in a new light, creating it forward. It could be gardening. It could be a myriad of things. So just know it could be anything. We tend to think, okay, it has to be something really, really big. No, it's just going to be something that's really important to us, that connects us to the earth, that connects us with our creative powers, that really makes us feel at harmony and really embracing the beauty of who it is that we are. We're thinking outside of the box. We're shining a bit. The stars are coming forward for us and we are claiming our prosperity. We're claiming our beauty. We're, we're seeing why we're here on this earth more and more and more. And it brings us then to looking at things, excuse me, quite differently than we have looked at things before. 
the high priestess has the veil lifted from our eyes, has us looking forward at ourselves with much more honesty. So it can be that we can be a little bit brutal to ourselves and even to others. It's like, well, that's not true or that's not what you're really going to do. It doesn't matter that we're going to be spot on. It doesn't matter that it can be a little bit affronting to others. So just be aware of that. And then we have the fact that we're seeing people in a new light. We're not seeing them for who they want us to see them as, like a big masquerade with everybody wearing their costume. No, we see them for what they can truly bring forward or who they truly are or, or what they, they they truly want in this life. And it brings us to the nine of wands because we are also so intuitive during this time. We have a lot of that quote unquote female intuition coming forward. It brings us to the nine of wands. It brings us to this place where it's like, okay, I cannot be taking in the words and the feelings and the and the push and the pull from everybody. So we also need to stand our ground without being obstinate or cruel or anything like that. We just need to say, this is what I need. This is what I don't need. This is how I need to move forward. This is what's important for me. Because if we don't do that, we're not going to truly connect with who we are or what we want or the bigger picture of things. So being aware of that is going to be very powerful for us during this time. Also being aware that people are going to pull us in many different directions. And it can be, you know, home and work. It can be, you know, school and 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 work and, and friends and, and everything. But what we're really going to find is that we're pulled in many different directions by people who should know better, who should know, okay, you know what, I know you're doing this right now. I'll let you finish and then we'll talk or then we'll do this. There's also a sense of a lot being put on our plates, a lot being pulled, like my attention being pulled this way and this way and, and that way. And so it means that what we're going to see here is that I'm not going to be doing anything really well if this keeps happening. So we're not going to be doing things to their fullest if this keeps happening to us. If we keep on having to go this way and then go this way and then do this. And it's like, oh my gosh, one thing at a time is going to be super important for us. It brings us to the two of cups. It brings us to healing. It brings us to love. It brings us to connection. It brings us to unity, which really does lead us forward. There's a calm that comes over us. But again, that calm can easily be broken if we let everybody's chaos come forward. If we let everybody, you know, kind of pull us in all the different directions. The king of cups here is very much saying, this is my power. This is my prosperity. This is what I do. So the king is in the middle of the water, right? And that means that he doesn't have all the people around him. He has himself. And so we know here by embracing our hearts, looking at what we emotionally need, want, and are discovering that we only rule ourselves. And because we only rule ourselves, we can only use our emotions to bring ourselves forward. We can't make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. My nephew is two years old, and I swear to God, he is more stubborn than adults are. And if we can't make a two-year-old do what we want them to do, then how the heck can we make other people do what we want them to do? So here, it's it's very important. It's very important to acknowledge that. It's like, okay, you know, they'll, they'll give me the lip service. They'll say, yes, yes, yes. And they'll still do what they were going to do anyway. So with the with the King of Cups, we were very much acknowledging that energy. We're very much acknowledging that I have to lead in the example of myself, even if it makes us kind of unpopular because people might think, oh, you're putting on airs or, oh, you think you're better than us. It's like, no, I don't. I just think that this is what I have to do for me to move me forward. And this is what's right for me emotionally. And I'm not going to do anything that sabotages me emotionally. You know, it's kind of like, I'm too old for that. You know, it's, it's very much that sentiment. It's like, I've been there. I've done that. We've all been there. We've all done that where, you know, we've, we've sacrificed ourselves or we've said, oh, well, this what makes us cool. And this is what that person wants. Or, you know, you will, will make us, you know, liked by this person or that person. And it doesn't work out the way that we had thought it would. So just being very mindful of that is going to be important. It moves us to temperance. It moves us to balance. It moves us to insight. It moves us also to going deeper and deeper into our emotional self. What do I love? What do I need? What's moving me forward? What isn't moving me forward? What's helping me? What isn't helping me here? And so as we're finding that balance and as we're diving deeper into ourselves, not only emotionally, but also into our intuition, into you know how we feel within this world. So yes, it's emotionally, but it's also spiritually during this time 
the star comes forward and it's like, what do you greatly wish for? And that's what we're really trying to prepare ourselves for at our heart because we know that the star, this wish, is starting to come forward. But we also know that during this time, we can get kind of sidetracked with the chariot. Now, chariot is journey and success and progress, yes, but because it also is that sister sign, that one that can push all the buttons or absolutely elevate us, we have to be aware of that. We have to be aware that during this time, we can have the star come forward. We can have the wishes come forward. We can have the beauty come forward within our lives, most definitely. But we can also have ourselves, have our attention just like absolutely pulled to one way. And it's an illusion. It's a delusion. It's it's not right for us. So just be aware of that. Be aware of being in alignment during this time or looking at things and saying, this is where I want to go and making sure that we go there because there's such an energy of getting sidetracked or getting overwhelmed or looking at things in a, a different way that we think, okay, this is going to be innovative and new or fun or whatever. And it winds up causing us a lot more stress than, than we thought it would. So just being aware of that is going to be very important during this time because we have so much to bring forward during this time that we don't want we don't want it to be mucked up we just really don't so let's look at our subconscious energy to be mindful of and it's the queen of swords air sign energy gemini libra aquarius this is somebody who's very good at twisting words at you know it's kind of like the person who gives a compliment and an insult at the exact same time has you completely off your guard so be aware of that it's a very sharp tongued quick witted person it moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, life purpose. This is the third chakra. We are speaking our purpose into existence. We are ascending the steps. We are seeing ourselves. We are understanding the way that we need to move forward. And that is becoming powerful. That is becoming beautiful for us. And so here with the third chakra, as we embrace our words, as we embrace what we are discovering within ourselves, we are speaking a powerful and beautiful truth that guides us forward. It's also saying, this is, this is why I'm here. And so often we think it has to be a big thing. We think it has to be this big, passionate, like overwhelming thing of why we're here on this earth, you know, to, to be a movie star or a rock star, you know, those type of things, CEO of a company. But sometimes it's to live a very quiet life. And sometimes it's to have beautiful gardens and to have beautiful connections with our community and our family and just to be loved and to be gentle and to love. And that is enough. You know, so often we hear that that's not enough. It has to be more and more and more. It doesn't. It just simply doesn't and so when we're letting ourselves shine forward we have to not poo poo what what makes our heart sing what makes us shine it brings us to our subconscious chakra energy not chakra energy rooted self and it's the fool the fool here is moving ourselves forward the fool here is opening up our eyes and seeing what it is that we are discovering what it is that we are wanting what it is that we're needing and not being afraid to look foolish because remember every single hero's journey starts with us first being a fool starts with people not understanding or not seeing or not, you know, caring the way that, that we do about something. Because every single, again, hero starts off as a person who was mocked, as a person who was left at. And so here, as we move forward, we start to see ourselves. We start to say, you know what, I'm taking that risk. I'm moving and I'm going after what is vitally important to me. Will I fall? Absolutely. Will I fail? Absolutely. Not all the time, but there will be moments when we feel like failures. There'll be moments where we feel completely overwhelmed. And that's okay. We need to still move ourselves forward. And it brings us to our subconscious inner self. And that's the devil. That's the essence of us. We have to be mindful of what's mesmerizing us during this time. Because the vampire and the woman, the vampire in especially old vampire movies, which I love the black and white ones, but I don't watch anything scarier than that. You know, they tend to mesmerize their their people and well their 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 prey, right? And call them forward and lure them to their their castle, lure them to their lairs. And here, what we're going to find is that we've been mesmerized by the wrong things. It's by the beauty of something, or it's by the wealth of something, or the promise of something, or the, you know, imp implication of something. And spirit's saying, What's really coming forward now? What is it that we really have and what is it that we're really building? This is breaking us free of, you know, of addictions and doubts and fears and, and chaos and hurts and pains and saying, no, this is what I'm moving forward towards. This is what I want. We're stepping into the essence of ourselves and we're really kind of going to be plain speaking about it. It's like, this is what I want. This is where I'm headed. Everything else can go up in places, you know, at times. This is how I'm moving forward. It brings us to our subconscious emotional self and it's the chariot. 
It's reigning in our waters. It's reigning in our emotions. And it's moving forward. Mamanin, the god of the sea, which is what this card represents right here, make, makes his horses out of water. So we're going to make our speed forward, our way of connecting, our way of opening up the doors out of our emotions, out of what we desire, out of what we feel. And there's going to be a fear to that. It's going to be like, what if I'm wrong? Yeah, but what if you're right? Like, what if this beauty can guide us into so much more than we anticipated or expected? It brings us then to our subconscious public arena self, and it's the tower. Things have fallen apart. Here, it is destruction and enlightenment and release. There has been destruction in our lives. Things have fallen in a way that we just couldn't imagine and wouldn't have, like if somebody told us this is how it's going to fall apart, we would have laughed in their face. We would have been like, oh, please, you know, it's not going to fall apart that way. This is, person's absolutely crazy. And then when it happens, it's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. So here the enlightenment comes forward. The wisdom comes forward. The, the sense of through that trauma, through that drama, I now see so much more clearly of myself and what I desire than I've ever seen before. And it brings us to a release, a release of the, the pain that we've been carrying, a release of prior conceived expectations. And it brings us forward because this is God's source spirit. However, you see the divine universe throwing us out of our comfort zone and saying, we need to walk this path and you weren't doing it before. So that's going to be a very powerful, powerful thing. The, ch the, the tower doesn't have to be trauma. It doesn't have to be trauma. A lot of times it manifests itself as trauma because we had the tap of the shoulder, we had the little push, and then all of a sudden everything needed to fall down because we weren't listening before. So just connecting. Also, sometimes the trauma you know, we experience in our lives, but it's also a huge part of somebody else's story. So this is something that we just have to be aware of here. And the way that we move forward, it brings us into a place of wisdom because I've walked through things that weren't perfect. We've walked through things that weren't perfect, that weren't right, that, were, that weren't where we needed to be. And it's by walking through, it's almost like the fires, right? The purification by fire, the, the shaping by fire, the forging. The forging happens. It's kind of like how a diamond is made, right? A diamond is this worthless piece of coal in the ground put under tremendous amount of pressure for years and years and years. And then, you know, centuries even, and it becomes finally a, a diamond. It becomes that very valuable, very strong, you know, object that we value, that we put worth upon. And so here, that's what's happening to us. We're becoming strong and valuable and, and prosperous and powerful. And that's because we've walked through the flames. That's because we've been through the revel, the pressure, the, the change. All right. All right, Capricorn. I hope that reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. Sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time, but also the transformation of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. peace and in harmony, Capricorn. <laughs>